Okay, so this mini lecture is going to talk about a image formation, variety of image formations, in a concave lens. So a diverging lens. So on the board, I've already represented our three lens situation. Um, and we're going to look at what happens when we take an object and look at the image through a concave lens. And as we move the object closer to the lens and further away from the lens. So. To remind us of some vocabulary and what we have set up here, this vertical line is our lens. It's a concave lens. It's a thin spherical lens, so we're going to just model it as a straight line. The distance between the lens and this point is what we call the focal length. And this point is the focal point. On both sides of the lens, it's symmetric, so those are even. And then, of course, we have the optical axis, which is the meridian that bisects the lens itself. Okay, so let's imagine we have an object. I'll just use an arrow, and it's going to move closer, that same object, and further away from this convex cave, concave, concave, concave lens. So in order to determine the image location in a concave lens, we're going to use a couple principal rays. These are the, now remember, a light source emits light from itself and in all directions and in straight lines. So although we're only looking at a couple of the rays to draw our images, we want to keep in mind that there's an infinite number of rays happening. And they're all refracting in the same way and they will all generate um, the same location for our image. Okay, so parallel rays of light in a concave lens, rays of light that are parallel to the optical axis, will refract along the line that is along the line of the near focal point. So they will refract in a way that is in line with the near focal point. And rays of light that are in line with the near focal point sorry, far focal point, I was like, this isn't going to work. Rays of light that are in line with the far focal point, so it's in line with the far focal point, that's going to refract parallel to the optical axis. So this ray of light is in line with the far focal point. When it hits the lens, it's going to refract parallel to the optical axis. And as it's typical rays of light, as is in our other lens, rays of light that are in line with the center of the lens remain unrefracted. Now you can see that all three of these rays of light are never going to converge. So it doesn't matter where I put a screen out here, I'm going to get information on that screen representing the top of the arrow in multiple places and it's going to appear fuzzy. So what if my visual system was here? My visual system, which has its own refractory power that converges light onto the renta, retina. What do I see when I view an object through this type of lens? Well, these th same three rays of light are the exact same three rays of light that would come from an object. Oops. If that object was located here, and that tiny notice that the top of the arrow for this virtual image is in line with this ray, and the top of the arrow for this virtual image is in line with this ray, and the top of the arrow of this virtual image is in line with this ray. So if I had a tiny little object here, and I, my eye was over here, this tiny little object would be giving me the same information as my object is being refracted through the lens. And my brain can't distinguish the difference between that information, so I see this image. Well, let's clarify that image. It's virtual, concave lens gives me a virtual image, which means it's upright. 
And in this case, we see that it's tiny. Not all virtual images are tiny. Remember our concave lens that can produce a virtual image. Once inside the focal point, made a really big virtual image, a magnified virtual image. This one's tiny. So that's one property of the concave lens. Now, let's see if that changes as I move my object distance back. So as I increase the distance of the object. Oh, sorry, I'm moving it forward. I'm not increasing it yet. I'm decreasing the distance of the object. Well, the same rays of light apply. They're uh, in our principal rays we can utilize. So I have parallel ray of light is refracted in line with the near focal point. And a ray of light in line with the far focal point is refracted out parallel. And a ray of light through the center of the lens remains unrefracted. So if I take those rays of light and I put them through my refractory system and the visual system, I find that they're the same rays of light that would have come from an object that is located at this location. So we've moved our object a little our image, excuse me, a little closer to the lens as compared to the previous location and we've made it a little bit bigger. Okay, so it's, that's not really easy to tell. Let's though look at what happens when we move it further away. Alright, so we've changed the location. It's still tiny though. Notice in all these cases it's tiny. Well, let's look at our third situation. Parallel rays of light, oh, I used orange instead of yellow, sorry, are refracted in line with the near focal point. Rays of light in line, I'm going to have to use the big one, in line with the far focal point are refracted out parallel. And, of course, rays of light that are in line with the center of the lens remain unrefracted. No, I can't sneeze. Sorry about that. All right, so if I extend those three rays back as if they were coming from another object, we find that I get an even tinier object shifted further away from the lens. So as I increase my object distance in this case, my image distance increases, we're getting further away from the lens, and the height of that object decreases. And as I decrease my object distance, I forgot to do this part, the image distance decreases and the height of my object increases. But what are we noticing? They're all still tiny. And regardless of where I shift this object, the image will always be smaller. And it will always be virtual. So for a concave lens, regardless of the location of the object, I'm always going to get a virtual image, which means I can't use a concave lens to produce an image that I can print or photocopy or take a picture of, burn on a film, put on a screen. Because no matter where I put the screen, there's no rays of light converging to recreate that image. So a concave lens will not produce an image. It only produces a virtual image, and that virtual image is tiny. All right, good job.